Today you see a pattern for a hoodie that's super easy to sew. I made one for my husband. I think it turned out really nice. I was also a little bit sneaky and used the exact same pattern to make one for myself. There's also the same version for kids. Super easy, no fuss, so really, really fun. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from knittingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today I have my version of the Tailgate Hoodie by Love Notions. It's a brand new pattern designed for the men in our lives. And there's also a little kids version. It's exactly the same thing in sizes two to 16 called sideline. They all have the same features. It's a pretty classic sweatshirt. You can choose to make it just with a crew neckline, some ribbing around here, or you can add a hood. The hood is a two-piece hood. You have a seam going around here, and you can choose to do it lined or unlined. There's instructions for both. Really relaxed feet, slightly dropped shoulder, nice amount of ease. On the front, you have a kangaroo pocket that is very easy to sew and looks super neat. For, of course, there's cuffs there and a hemband. It's a typical, typical hoodie, no fuss. It's really, really easy to put together, I found. These patterns are designed for neat fabrics, but you don't need it to stretch that much. The minimum amount is 20%. You do have ease in the pattern, so if your fabric only stretches horizontally, but nothing vertically or just has vertical give, don't worry about that because for this pattern, those fabrics will work. You do have enough ease. You don't need the fabric to stretch vertically. If it doesn't, you will be absolutely fine. So the typical fabrics you use are sweatshirting materials, French terry, sweater knits. Athletic knits, of course, are going to work. Ponty Roma. I would also use a heavier cotton lycra. The parrots are really having a conversation today. <laughs> I chose Ponty Roma for both my versions. It was just the fabric I had most at hand. I typically don't buy sweatshirting materials at all. I just don't have them in my collection. I think they can be a little heavy and a little hot for my needs. So I think Ponty Roma is perfect. These Ponty Roma fabrics have a mix of rayon and polyester and spandex. They stretch horizontally. My husband, he's just very, very boring. He chose black. There's no way he would ever wear a hood that's not black. Like Even he's ready to wear things. He just wears black jackets, black t-shirts. Same as my son, it's like a thing. <laughs> So there's no other option for me. I'm just really happy I had a good two meters of Ponty Roma. That was enough for all the pieces and for my hood as well, for, for the inner lining of my hood. For mine, I chose a really fun print, Ponty Roma as well. Just really awesome print that looks from far away, like it's some boucle type wool material, but that's just the print on the Ponty. And I think it looks really cool. If you're doing the neck band for the crew neck version, for also the cuffs and the band, you need your fabric to stretch at least 40% there. That's because this is an area that you would have to stretch to match these areas. So the Ponty Roma I found was not the proper fabric to do cuffs and hembands. It just doesn't stretch that much like it should. So for my husband's, I use a ribbing material. I had just a little bit of black left. For mine, I chose to not do any hembands at all. I just hemmed my sleeve and hemmed my hoodie just normal which was a design option as well i just wanted mine regular just did not want the hembands there i didn't really fuss about that decision at all because i'd already made that decision before even cutting up my fabric if you want to put grommets here on this area of the hood you need a little bit of fusible interfacing that doesn't stretch if you don't have grommets or don't want to put grommets you can also do a buttonhole in both cases you'll need a little bit of interfacing to stabilize that area there and you need some type of drawstring i just recycled one i'd saved away from one of my son's old hoodies i have a box full of recycled stuff and for my version i just made mine with a cotton light crutch sewed a tube, turned it right sides out and called it a day. <laughs> because the tailgate hoodie and the sideline hoodie are new patterns, they have a discounted price through Monday the 23rd of October, so for the first week. I think it's around 25%-ish. Remember that when you check out, if you use my code, you can get 10% off on top of the sale price. At this point, my code is LPN10, but it's always changing, so you always need to check in the comment section 
I pin it there so you can see and also in the description box you can easily find my links there if you do use my affiliate link you don't pay anything extra it just means that part of the sale comes to me as commission and that is one way that I make an income doing what I do here on YouTube so if you use it I'm always very grateful men's sizing of course is completely different to women's sizing <laughs> you know men tend to have a straighter figure where the chest the waist and the hips are sort of more equal than what we have as women you know they don't have this projection coming forward on the front of their bodies like a lot of us do so when you look at the size chart you'll see sizes from extra small to 5x that will go up to a 58 inch chest waist and hip more than about what height this is drafted for we have finished measurements which is a lot more helpful i find in my opinion because men have different vertical proportions as well as women do there are some men that have a really long torso and short legs or the other way around so the way that fits on the body pretty individual the finished length including the hemband is 25 inches so that's a good way to know whether you need to make it shorter or longer just measure from the back of the neck down the back and see very easy to do the pattern is pretty much straight down so you can separate the pattern and add or overlap if you need it shorter the finished length of the sleeve is 28 inches which I found too long both for my husband and myself because this sleeve starts a little lower because the shoulder is a little more dropped like that I just left the measuring of the sleeve towards the end when I tried it on my husband and then I went ahead and chopped two and a half inches off then added my cuff and then it's all good the sleeves I find run a little long of course my husband is not the tallest man in the planet he's around five foot nine that is individual as well <laughs> would be very easy to alter if you need a longer or shorter sleeves if you look at the measurements chart you will see chest and waist that they are the same so you will see for example 43 inch chest 43 inch waist and then it would continue the same for the hip I measured my husband and he's actually a pretty straight rectangle he's pretty much got the same measurements chest waist and hips he's a perfect rectangle it was really easy for me to choose a size M for myself I chose a size large to extra large at the hips just looking at my measurements I can't really sew a straight size because my body is not a rectangle so I just needed that extra space at the hips and I was able to sew up the hoodie as well I kept the original length I also had shorter sleeves I just want to say a few things about using a pattern like this that's not designed for a curvy figure and what your expectations of fit would be of course I know this is not going to fit perfectly like a woman's pattern would but it's a relaxed style I have days where I do want to be relaxed and I don't really care about having super tailored garments usually a hoodie this type of sweater is not that type of garment that I would be expecting that so knowing that men usually have a flat front right here <laughs> the armhole is symmetrical both in the front and the back which means the sleeve is also symmetrical in the front and the back Usually that's something that's different with women's patterns where the armhole here on the front is a little bit more curved and the back one is a little straight. Same as the shape of the sleeve cap is a little different from the front to the back. But remember again, this is a relaxed fit garment. You know, the shoulders are a little bit dropped. I'm not being really nitpicky about fit. But you'll see in the sewing segment that I did add a bust that. <laughs> I think that does make a small difference. See about sewing, it's very easy to put together. I'm only focusing on the kangaroo pocket and the lined hood, which is the option that I'm doing, some general construction. So let's see. I filmed it on my version because mine has a clearly different side, wrong and right side. My husband's was just black ponty. There's no way you could have really seen what I was doing there. These are the pattern pieces for my version of the tailgate hoodie. I'm going to make one for myself and I'm using a Ponty Roma. This is the back, that's the front. The neckline on the front is a little lower as you can see there than the neckline on the back. The armholes here are the same because this is a man's pattern. So the sleeve here is going to have the same shape and you can either just finish that with a neckband and have a crew neckline or you can add a hood. I've got two here for the lining and two from the main. Lining is optional. There are instructions to do it unlined as well. I really can't remember the last time I made a hood that wasn't lined. I always line them, so if there's an option, I'm gonna take that one. Now, what I don't have over here, this is the cuff piece there. I am doing those for my husband's version, and then there's the hemband. So my husband's versions will have these things. But for me, all I did was make sure the sleeve was gonna be long enough and just true the shape over here, and I'm gonna have a regular hem. 
no no cuff right there and for the hemband I'm still thinking I might not do the hemband this is the last piece I had to cut out and it's a kangaroo pocket that's going to go sewn onto the front piece it's narrower on the top and it slants out towards the bottom. This at the bottom will be touching the raw edge of the front. It will be caught in the hemband. To assemble this, it's really easy. All you have to do is fold in the edges by an inch like this and top stitch that. And then the top is folded in by half an inch like that. But before, I want to stabilize these openings. I don't want them to stretch out. This is a neat, so it's going to stretch. So I'm going to fuse interfacing here an inch, non-stretch interfacing just to make sure that when I put my hands in there later, this isn't gonna stretch out. This is the pocket. I have already done the interfacing there. I have folded it back into the wrong side. You can see it's really stable with the interfacing. And on the top edge, which is the narrow one, I've also searched the edge and pressed it in by half an inch. All I'm gonna do now is just top stitch from the right side to hold that in place. And then I'm gonna go and sew it onto the front piece. This is the bottom of the front and I'm just marking the center with a few pins so I can see where the center is. Pins going right there. You probably can't see them but I can. And now I've just got the pocket piece I have already sewn. So what you would essentially do is just line it up. I also have a center mark that I made with the iron on the pocket. And one easy way would be for you to just align it there. The bottom edges should match. The top is folded in by half an inch. And then all you need to do is top stitch there. And then from the bottom up for about three inches, you need to top stitch on the edge there and that would close it up and you put your hands through there. So that's one easy way. I don't want to have that top stitching go across there. So one way you can do that is just keep it like this. <laughs> Align it there. I'm going to reach under here and put a pin where that fold is so it doesn't move on both sides. So I've got it fixed there. And now I'm going to flip this up and I have that crease that I had already done at the iron and this is where I'm going to sew. So right there at the crease, I'm going to sew with the half an inch right there. I've just sewn that seam, as you can see there, it's all across this way and I've just pushed it back pressed it. It's very nice, very neat, very clean on the top. There's no seam visible. I've aligned it here on the sides as well and I'm just going to measure three inches and put a pin right here. Now that it's pinned, we just sew this bottom section right there. That'll fix the pocket in place and then I'm going to have space for my hands on this open area. It's such an easy kangaroo pocket. Super easy. On the center front of the hood piece, you'll find a little mark. It's, I marked it in red there and I just interfaced that area, non-straight interfacing as well to stabilize it. You can either do a buttonhole or a grommet there to pull the drawstring through. I'm going to be doing a grommet. I have a full video showing you how to do that. This is how the thumbnail looks. When we sew this to the lining, we're going to use 3-8 seam allowance. So the grommet has to be further than the 3-8 seam allowance. So if I draw with a pen there, it has to be further than that. Then from here to there, we're going to be top stitching at an inch later from that seam over to here. So I'm just going to mark where that is. And in the middle, right there, that's where I'm going to place my grommet. Right where I put that dot there. Grommet is going to be around there. This is the main hood piece with the main fabric. The grommets are in and we have this curved area to sew all of this area here up to there. This is the area that's going to be sewn onto the neckline later and this is where you're going to have your center of the hood. Your head's going to be over here. So this just needs to be sewn with 3-8 seam allowance. For the main seams, I'm using a shallow zigzag. It looks like a straight stitch, but it is a zigzag that's going to stretch a little bit as you move. After sewing that curve, we have identical pieces for the lining. So if you're doing the lining, it's just doing it twice. Mm -hmm. 
After sewing both hood pieces together, I'm going to align them here at the straight edge and I'm going to match up these seams, right sides together. Here is the grommet section. So here's where we sew at 3 8 from here all the way up to the center and down the other side, uniting the two layers together. Now it's super easy, we just need to flip the layers so that they're wrong sides together, like this. Here's the main layer, the lining layer, and all we need to do now is sew the casing, which is about an inch right here. I'm going to try not to hit that, so I'll be sort of right there. That will be the casing all the way to the other side. I've got it tidy and I've got it hand basted. I roll the seam so that it's slightly going towards the inside so it's not right there on the edge. I'm going to use a zipper presser foot so that I can get close to this right here without a normal presser foot trying to jump over that. When we sew onto this neckline, there's going to be an overlap here of one and a half inches. So you need to measure there one and a half inches and just baste that together and then that will be ready to be sewn onto the neckline. And it's going to fit one to one. You're not going to have to stretch this to match the neckline, it should fit exactly. I'm going to put this aside, sew some shoulder seams. To sew the hood onto the neckline, you of course have to have sewn the shoulder seams. So that was a step I didn't film, that's very basic. And I have the hood here, right sides together with the neckline. Matched everything up one to one, the center back with the center front. Remember in the center front we have that overlap here of the hood piece by one and a half inches. This pin that you see there marks the center. There's a little line I did there in blue. And so now I'm just gonna sew it together with three eighths and then I'm gonna serge the edges. There is the hood sewn on. I've got the grommets there. I just have to pull the drawstring. There's a little bit of an overlap and everything fit perfect one to one. Now, if you want to, you can sew your sleeves in on the flat and then involve the seam of the sleeve with the side seams. I never do that. So I'm gonna sew the side seams separately and I have already got my sleeves ready. I've done the seam of the sleeve. I've even done the hem there. And so after sewing the side seam, I'm gonna sew the sleeve in. This is a neat, so everything's gonna match one to one. It's not like woven sleeves, it'll be super easy. This is my husband's version. I think it looks super nice. This came from one of my son's old hoodies. Whenever they get old and he can't wear them anymore, I do recycle things like this because I know they come in handy. And I have a really hard time buying these types of notions here. I just can't find anything really nice. So these are worth gold to me. <laughs> the inner part of his hood is made out of a cotton lycra that looks like denim. I use this quite a lot for my garments. I have quite a lot of yardage and that was great to go in there. It's nice and structured. It's a two piece hood. There's a seam going down the center right here. Just two pieces that go together. My husband is not about grommets and shiny things. <laughs> I only have grommets in silver or gold. Nothing that's matte and not shiny. So I didn't do that for him. I just did a simple buttonhole right there and that is perfectly fine for him. Whenever I make something for him, which is hardly ever, I do want him to wear it. So I do listen to what he wants. I know what he likes, what he prefers, and I'm not just gonna go and do what I want because the garment is not for me, right? <laughs> So here is my ribbing over here. I have very little left. I need to purchase some more, but I did have enough to sew on the cuffs right there and the hemband at the bottom. I'm glad it's a matching tone of black. Sometimes black tones don't really match that much. And here is the kangaroo pocket. I sewed it in the same way that you saw me sew that one where I flipped it up, sewed it and then flipped it down. And then I top stitched on the top for this one. And it was really neat, nice finish. This is also stabilized with interfacing and I also save little tabs and decorative things from my son's old things. So
So I just sewed this little tab in there on the side. It's decoration. I think it's got a it's got a horse on the side. <laughs> Whatever. It looks pretty. And yeah, that's what I added there as decoration. The back is just simple, just on the fold. This is plain on the wrong side. It's the type of fabric where you can't tell what the wrong and the right side is. And it's very soft, very appropriate for this weather. It's not too hot, lighter type hoodie, and it's perfect for here. I know he's really gonna enjoy this on planes and just to be around the house. And yeah, I was glad I was finally able to make him something after years and years and years. Now, Hubby agreed to me filming him and taking some photographs as long as his face is not here. He's a very private person and I'm the one that decided to be online not him so I do respect that so you can see the fit you can see how it looks like from front and back and I think it's really good it is a relaxed fit garment I think it accomplishes that and I think the details make it look really nice so there you go you can see it but not actually his face I'm just glad I got some type of footage instead of doing flat lace for you because I find that extremely boring so yeah that was my husband Mine is a, li is a little more colorful, you know, a little bit more me. The only color I don't like in this print is the mustard yellow there. But I think it's minimal compared to the gray, the white and the pink in here. So I'm okay. I mean, that's fine. <laughs> you can see that the print looks like a, a wool boucle type thing. It's really, really nice. I love it. And I have this fabric in other colorways as well. I just found it in a shop in Chile this summer. And I just bought several of the colorways because I liked it so much. I used the last leftover bits of my husband's Ponte Roma, the black, for the inner layer of my hood. And because I don't mind the shiny things, I do have my shiny grommet here. Remember, I have a full video on how to put grommets in. I did it in the exact same way I show you there. It's a specific video about grommets, so have a look at that. And I made my own drawstring with that denim look cotton kind of lycra. And then I put this at the end there with a little knot. I think it looks really cute. And I'm glad I had these lying around. <laughs> so it just gives it something extra there. My sleeve is plain. I just hemmed it. I didn't add the cuff. So I measured how long I wanted it to be. And then just added the hem allowance there. Same at the bottom. I didn't want to do a hem band. I just wanted it to be nice and relaxed. So the pocket goes all the way up to the bottom right here. The kangaroo pocket. It's a print so you can't really see it that much but I know I'm gonna really like putting my hands in here <laughs> and if I wear this around the house I can put my phone in here and just carry it around with me. Now I decided to do little slits here on the side. The seam allowance is not big on the inside it's just 3 8 but that was enough to get nice neat slits right there. You can see my edges are surged and I've used my sewing machine for the main seams and pressed the seams open. I treat Ponte Roma as if it's a woven in the way that I sew it and press it and everything and I'm always so happy with the results. There is a sleeve right there, side seams, all my seams are pressed open. Here is the little side seam slit opening that I left there. Is a bust that right there. It's very discreet, you can't tell it's there but it does take away some length from the side. I have a full video showing you how to drape your own bust darts. This is not a full bust adjustment, this is just adding a dart. I know the dart intake I want for my cup size and you know for my body is four centimeters which is about one and a half inches. So when you just add a dart on a pattern and you just close it up your front is going to become that much shorter compared to the back. So when I was cutting my front pattern all I did was cut it one and a half inches longer. I already did that from the get-go knowing I was going to add a dart with a one and a half inch intake over here and then I was going to get a nice fit in the end. The side seams were going to match. Remember they are pretty straight on the sides anyway so it doesn't really matter if you lengthen it a little. It's really not going to deform anything and then I get a nice oversized relaxed fit hoodie with a little bit of a secret in there, a little bit of a dart that does help a little bit with the fitting. That's my little trick and I'm really happy I did it here. And as usual for styling I'm gonna try and dress it down and dress it up a little bit. 
I love doing that, so let's see it on. Here is my tailgate. I made this one for myself, even though it's not curvy sizing. I think it still works. I made a size large, blended out to an extra large at the hips. I didn't add the hem band, so mine looks a little shorter because I just used the original length. And I think the fit and the ease is really good. I love the colorful print, and I've just got it paired with some stretch velvet joggers, some sneakers, very casual. Here up closer, you can see the ease at the hips. It's really nice. I like the little sleet on the side. I added that at a late addition just when I was hemming. I undid the sides a little bit and opened them up. My sleeves are two and a half inches shorter than the original pattern. Here you can see the kangaroo pocket. Well, you can barely see it because it's a print, but it's very comfortable. It's flat, it's not bulky, and it was really easy to sew. Up closer, you can see the neckline. You know, you can add a regular crew neckline, but I wanted the hood and it overlaps on the front. I made myself this drawstring. I added this little metal business on the bottom <laughs> just to make it look pretty and I do have a golden grommet right there. My hood is lined, you can do it unlined as well if you want to. Here you can see the shoulder feet, my shoulder is there. So it's lightly dropped which matches the shape of the sleeve as well. So I think it's absolutely fine for this type of style. And up higher you can see the hood on. I think the hood is very well made, it's two piece and it fits really well, it's not humongous, doesn't have a pointy top. It really shapes the head very well. I do actually use hoods, it's not just decorative for me. When I get cold, I actually put the hood on and I love the feeling of that, especially for napping. Here on the side, you might be able to see the bust that I added on. It's very discreet, it's not a huge dart and I think it does improve the feet on the side there. I did that because I know the pattern is drafted for a straighter figure, which I don't have. A little bit of shaping on the side did make a difference for me. I really loved how this turned out. I'm really excited to wear it in real life, both dressed down and dressed up as you will see in the next couple of looks. Here is another fun one. I'm just pairing this with black bottoms right now because it's what goes with it best. And I've got a stretch velvet skirt, some combat boots, and I'm ready to go. Not too casual, not too formal, just in between. And I always dress up my hoodies with skirts anyway, so it's good. not I would try to dress this up and go to church with it as well I just got my black pencil skirt with a long slit in the center front love this skirt some really nice boots and a nice bag I'd probably add on some type of scarf when I wear it as well I feel like I was able to dress up this hoodie as well which I love love doing that love playing around with my garments and making them work for whatever I want I really enjoyed making these. I made them both in one day. Super enjoyable, there was nothing hard. It's quite stress-free and about the fitting, you don't need to worry about that much. I think it would fit. Just take some measurements and sew it and you'll be fine. It's a type of garment that will allow easy fitting like this. And I really enjoyed making something for my husband. I hadn't made something for him in, I don't even know. Cause yeah, probably I made jeans for him a couple of years ago. Lately, I haven't made him anything. I'm really happy Love Notions made a pattern like this that's simple, that's classic, and that's just really easy to sew up for the people around us. It's not just about me. I loved making this for him as well. Of course, I had to make one for myself. <laughs> Remember, there's also a little kid's version. It's exactly the same in sizes 2 to 16. Remember the tailgate for men? and the sideline for kids is discounted through Monday the 23rd of October. You can grab it through my link if you want and don't forget to use my code at checkout for an extra 10% off. That's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this one. Make your hoodies lined. You'll never regret it. They just feel and look so good. Bye.